Hello, I'm Kelly and welcome to my floss tube channel, Animal Instinct. I'm back with another cross stitching update today. It's the 6th of March, 2022. Thank you very much for stopping by and spending some time with me. Um, I'd just like to start by saying, I hope you're all well and really importantly safe. There's some really awful things going on in the world right now, including the war in Ukraine and also closer to home, there's been some absolutely devastating floods uh, happening over on the eastern coast of Australia. Um, and I just wanted to mention that my heart goes out to anyone adversely impacted by, by these events that are going on at the moment. Um, I have plenty to share today, um, including what have I got? I've got a pile of um, works in progress, a couple of starts, a little start and a finish, and some stitchy kindness. Um, I was going to mention, I had a very strange um, start to my day this morning. I was just dozing in bed. Um, it's kind of like half awake, half asleep, and all of a sudden the bed shook, the house shook, all the doors were rattling, the roof was making strange noises, and we had an earthquake. So not, no damage, I don't think, um, but it was pretty strong. I haven't felt one like that in a very long time, and it's you know not really how you want to wake up on a Sunday morning at 7.30. <laughs> I was hoping to sleep in a little bit longer than that. Um, but anyway, we're all good here. So let's start with my little start and finish. Um, I decided, so I was going to film last weekend, but um, just didn't get around to it. So I've got a little bit of extra stitching that I've done in this past week um, to share. And that includes this one. So I completed the August lock of um, Puga Stories from New Leaf Craft. And here is the finish. So it's August, but it's this, one of their summer blocks. It's summer in Australia at the moment, so I'm kind of trying to stitch them um, when they're relevant to me. It doesn't quite work out. Um, it's a really small little <laughs> pattern. It's um, 40 by 40 stitches, but it's like jam-packed with, with um, features, <laughs> detail. So there were 24 different DMC colours used. Um, what else? I think there was something like 58 different combinations of stitches, half stitches, back stitches, etc. So sometimes you use one strand, sometimes you use two, sometimes it was a blend. Um, there's a one lone French knot um, in the watermelon. You probably can't even see that. The watermelon there. <laughs> So the more I looked at this, um, the more it sort of came to life and actually I saw some features in a photo of it um, after I'd finished it rather than while I was stitching. Um, but if I just go through what's on there, so it's a picnic setting up in the hills overlooking some water, maybe at sunset I guess. Um, there's a picnic blanket, there's an open book and some glasses, the cheese platter and a couple of glasses of wine. There's a watermelon there with a wedge cut out of it and you can even see the uh, seeds in the wedge. There's that pretty sunflower. Then you've got the wicker basket which with that neat uh, woven effect which is just cross stitching and back stitching. Um, there's the blanket, oh not blanket, like a tea towel, red and white check tea towel in the, in the basket. There's a bottle of wine in there, um, bread stick and not really sure what's between the bottle and the breadstick, but maybe some, I'm not sure, stuff. <laughs> um, but that was nice. That was just a quick sort of start and finish. I just felt like, you know, doing it um, earlier this week. I think it was like maybe the 1st of March-ish. Uh, and then this is, so I've done two others. Now don't look at the placement. They're not going to stay like this. <laughs> so I've done three now out of 12. So if I come in, so that was this month. That was the previous month and then so they're the they're the three summer blocks um and can you hear that the cats are in time out for being naughty <laughs> we'll just ignore that for now and hope they go to sleep or something <laughs> anyway i hope to keep working on this um maybe once a month just getting one done 
Uh, the fabric is 28 count even weave. It's called Aether, Aether, A-E-T-H-E-R by Chromatic Alchemy. Actually, pause. We'll see how we go. <laughs> okay, next up. Right, so last video, um, I was slowly working my way through my pile of focus projects for the year. And I'm trying to put, I was trying to put 1,000 stitches into each of them. And I have done that for all of them. So I'll show you the rest of the ones that I've worked on since I last filmed. <laughs> Cats. <laughs> driving me crazy I tell you what um, first one is Tempest by Leilani Joy Gecko Rouge um, kit and last video I had started the 1000 stitches I'd done about 200 on her eyelashes and this is really not very interesting to share <laughs> to show but anyway I did another 800 or so stitches on her face in one color Um, that sort of beigey colour. I just wanted something easy, so I just sort of worked out the the edges, and then I just was filling in the whole time. So, yeah, pretty boring. <laughs> So that's 25 count Lugana, one over one full crosses. Next up is my Chatelaine. I think I also mentioned I was quite keen to work on that after I filmed last time and that's what I did. Uh, so I'm doing the Taj Mahal Mandala Chatelaine and I realized I haven't really shown a good photo of it. That's because there doesn't, I don't think one exists. Um, I've only found like completed projects. So you just have to use your imagination um, it's four, you know, beautiful um, Taj Mahals, up, down, left, right. <laughs> uh, so, I did my thousand stitches. Now, this is always really awkward to show. Um, hang on a second. That's going to be... So, hopefully I put in... Where I was. Um, it's on 32 count. Is that in focus? I can't tell. 32 count Belfast linen. It's um, black linen. <laughs> can, you can see me through the, the fabric. Um, and as you can see, I've really, I'm really close to finishing the center motif. Um, I feel like those stitches are looking very bright. <laughs> Oh yeah, I guess that's right. I am so close to finishing the cross stitches. I've only got some in here to go. Oh, and here. Um, so next time I will definitely finish the center square and move on to, I think my first um, Taj Mahal, which is cool. Now something I kind of figured out while I was stitching, I, I read all the tips before I started this ages ago um, and started, oh, sorry, purchased the PDF rather than the paper pattern. So, just put it there. Um, because you can zoom in, they're really busy patterns. You can zoom in and see the details, which is great. Um, but it's a little bit annoying because it's spread over four pages. And because I was doing this center square, I had to scroll between the four pages to see the pattern. Um, and it was fine. I mean, you know, deal with it. <laughs> but I was trying to work out a better way so I wouldn't have to keep scrolling between pages. And I came up with a, a bit of a solution. I'm not super techy, but I do like technology. Um, and I'm sure there's a more sophisticated way of doing this. Um, but for my own use and to make it easier for me to stitch what I did was I took a screenshot of the um, just that center square on each of the four pages and then I sort of pasted them all into one document so that it is now the one center square um, on one document does that make sense <laughs> anyway I can see that I can see what I'm stitching on one page rather than having to scroll between them really really helpful so I don't know if that helps anyone else with any other sort of pattern 
um, but it's kind of a workaround so you don't have to keep scrolling and trying to remember what you're actually sort of looking at. Um, so that's Chatelaine. Next one is... I was going to try and rush, but my battery's going to die. <laughs> I'll just keep going for a few more minutes and then I'm going to have to charge my battery. Does that sound familiar to anyone? <laughs> anyway, let's just carry on. Next one is Sheep Heap by Plum Street Samplers. So I'm stitching this on a piece of 36 count natural linen. Um, one over two, full crosses, of course, um, using the called for threads. Uh, I'm doing it with um, four different livestock species together, um, sort of as a ode to my studies that I completed last year. Um, and I started at the year I started that course in 2019. Would have been good if I could have finished them, finished up the stitching last year, but anyway. So um, that's where the whole thing's looking at the moment. And I'll just come in. So I've done a thousand stitches on sheep heap. So you can see my shaggy sheep. I still got to brush him a bit. That's um, white whisper thread. And I want three shaggy, decrepit looking sheep. <laughs> the plan uh, what I did was I think I finished I came down I did the flowers and I started down here um, my friend Deb Wilson uh, gifted me some really um, shaggy brown thread to try and use on this one and unfortunately Deb I can't get it to work it's a little bit too fat for the fabric uh, it was yeah, I found it really hard to get through the holes of the fabric and also um, like it was breaking on me. So I think I actually have some black whisper thread, so that fairy stuff in black. And I think I'll make this one um, a shaggy black sheep. So yeah, that's my thousand stitches on that one. Okay, next is the old Scott. So this is a hands across the sea pattern. Yeah. Um, again, I just worked on it for about a thousand stitches. Let me just find it, hang on a second. This is on 40 count platinum linen, I'm pretty sure. Um, and I'm using the cold for silks on this one. Oh, it's <laughs> awkward, sorry. <laughs> so you don't need to see me behind it this time. So. you can see I started on that really curly Scottish alphabet before I think I've done the A and maybe had a start on the B I can't remember I will have popped a photo in um, but I finished that whole row of curliness once you got going you got into the swing of it and it was quite you know quite good to stitch um, the thread hanging out is this modified I'm using it for a modified rice stitch. It's really hard to, oh, there we go. Um, and I think it's just a bit bulky. I'm using two strands. I'm sure that the pattern would have said to use two strands, but I don't like how it's looking. So I think I'm going to frog that and, and do it again with one strand. Um, but yeah, a thousand stitches into the old Scott. I'll be back. Okay, that was only a second for you, but it's a long time for me. Hopefully we've still got light. <laughs> we have battery now, and I believe the cats have calmed down. So let's try and get through this. So the next project I put a thousand stitches into was the John Clayton collection cricket scene. I'll pop a photo in of where I was.
and this is where we are now. It's on 32 count um, antique white linen. The cold four DMC. So I'm just slowly working my way over. I think I've been in working in here. It was like ages ago that I did this, so I can't quite remember. Uh, I couldn't mention this piece without mentioning that we lost two Australian legends of cricket this week within 24 hours of each other. Uh, first came the news that Rod Marsh had unexpectedly passed away. He was a former Australian wicketkeeper. Um, in baseball terms, I've forgotten the name of the position, the one that stands behind the catchers, the catcher. <laughs> uh, so that was really, that was a shock. And then less than 24 hours um, came the news that Shane Warne had passed away. He was only 52, far too young, and he was an absolute legend. He was a, a very talented uh, spin bowler, uh, so the equivalent of a pitcher in baseball terminology. Um, yeah, 52, that, 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 that hits hard. I mean, I'm only, I'm in my 40s, so he wasn't that much older than me. Um, he was a very colourful character. A lot of people had opinions about him, but you can't deny his genius um, as a bowler. So, yeah. Cricket lost two greats this week. Alright, so next up was uh, Sea Glass by Carolyn Manning. I'll pop a photo in of where I was. And this is on 25 count, just um, uh, even wave. <laughs> it's an, I don't know what it is really. Uh, that's where we are. So that's a thousand stitches. I think, I can't remember exactly, but I think I'm about an eighth of the way through that one. It's only a small piece. But beautiful colours. Okay. Next up. So... Yeah, <laughs> sorry, I'm just trying to work out my order of stuff. Uh, next up is The Pilgrim by Long Dog Samplers. I'm stitching it with Silks for You PR011. And then the text, I'm doing another silks for you. Oh, it's all a big mess in here. Hang on. Uh, PR 140. Okay. It's on I can never remember. 36 count cream linen, I think. Photo in of where I was. Oh. And here we are now. So I've completed the top row of pages, which means I am now a third of the way through. And I'll just come in a bit closer to what I've worked on this month. I did do more than a thousand stitches. I wanted to spend a bit more time on this one in February. Get to that in a second. So I completed the body of the raven. Um, Pretty much, what was it? I'm trying to remember. <laughs> uh, all of this, uh, I think I had to do, yeah, just the base. 
of that. Brought this down. There's a little cute little snail there. I finished off Dream. Um, I did this creature. Is that what is that? Oh, we have a visitor. Not sure if they'll make an appearance on camera. Um, is that a? Can't work it out. It doesn't quite look like a cat. Is it a fox? Maybe. What do you reckon this thing is? Looks like it's pouncing on that bird. Um, so yeah, I, I'm really happy with how I'm doing here. Sorry, it's Jemima. She never, um, never comes up. So I don't know what's going on. It's very strange. Uh, so the reason I wanted to work on this in February, let me just take a little bit of time to explain and no, I don't think you should do that. So I'm stitching it in this dark teal color. Teal is ovarian cancer awareness color. February is ovarian cancer awareness month. Uh, so I do want to stitch on this every February at least. I didn't see anything in the media this year about it. Normally you'll see um, some ads on telly and might see some mention on the news um, or politicians wearing the little ribbons. Nothing this year. Um, I've mentioned it before, probably not in a while. So if you're new to my channel, I am a survivor of ovarian cancer and it's been eight and a half years since I went through um, went through it all. I'm very, very lucky. So ovarian cancer is a killer. It's a hidden killer of people with ovaries. There's no early detection tests that you can have. The symptoms are very vague and non-specific. I was sort of classic. I put on a little bit of weight. I felt bloated and tired. Um, I could explain that all the way to having like a stressful job and stopping exercising. Um, but that wasn't the whole story as it turned out. Most people, by the time they're diagnosed with it, it's already metastasized and then the prognosis is really, really poor. Um, so I just like to mention it probably every February. I try and mention it. I didn't do it last year. I know that. Um, it's really hard to say, like, you know, with breast cancer, you'd say, um, examine you know have a little feel have a feel for any lumps that's not going to work for this um, all I can say is be your own health advocate because no one else is going to be for you if something doesn't feel right go and seek medical help if you're not 100% happy with the answers you get there's no harm in getting a second opinion um, I didn't need to do that mine was picked up but it was yeah I was just very very lucky um, very fortunate to be here today um, and I don't talk about it too much, but every February expect me to mention this again. Um, so yeah, uh, look out for yourselves. Um, yeah. Right. So Pilgrim Teal. I started this, um, the whole sort of link to it was I started at, I think at my five year mark. Um, yeah, it was, it was August. 2018 was when I started this piece and I wanted to do it in teal. I wanted to do something in teal um, and this one was just released at that time and I really liked it so that's how it links. So sorry if I went on a little bit about that but it is something that I am passionate about. Okay I have one other project that I did a thousand stitches on but before I show you that one I'll just give you a quick update on my pain-free crafts mystery stitch along. So it's wind in the willow themed based on Chris Dunn's artwork. The first um, release came out in January. Huge frame. <laughs> um, I've done part of it. Then the second release came out at the start of February and it's Paisley Rabbit sitting in front of a window. Uh, and so I made a start on her, even though I haven't finished the frame. Um, I'll just show you what I've done. Um, this is on a 32 count um, printed fabric by Swigart. So 
I can't remember if I've done any more of the frame since I last filmed, but that's where it's at. <laughs> it's much bigger than that though. <laughs> Huge. Um, but I made a start on Paisley. I'll just quickly show you what I will do. I'm going to stop that and I'm going to actually complete the frame. That's my goal before I do any more. So yeah, so, oh, whoops. <laughs> so that's my start. So she's kind of like sitting in front of this um, window here, something like that. Uh, and that is that part of it is full coverage. The rest of it's not. Now there's all these octagons, um, and the March release has just come out, and it's toad. It's pretty cool. Um, a bit ugly, but you know, it is a toad. Toads aren't supposed to be handsome. <laughs> um, and you can actually choose which octagon you want to put it in. So it's a little bit, bit like choose your own adventure. But I'm not going to start him yet. I really do want to get more work on the frame done. Now, the last piece that I put a thousand stitches into was my Joan Elliott Time Traveller. Uh, put a photo in of where I was um, and then also after a thousand stitches because I did that earlier in February and if I filmed last weekend I wouldn't have any more to show you but I've um, continued to work on it this first week of March uh, it's also on my scroll frame it's going to be a bit hard to show really enjoying this If I need to put something behind it. Oh no, that's that's fine. So, how good is this looking? This is on 32 count um, Gothic by Picture This Plus. I have completed, so let's see, <laughs> where do I even start? Uh, the first bit I did when I was doing my thousand stitches was the umbrella or parasol and then I worked my way up coming a little bit more I haven't done the back stitching on the hand there so it's still a bit patchy but it does look good she's wearing a red glove um, and then I came down and I completed the suitcase and um, I still need to do finish the back stitching here Um, I was going to do this. She's holding a bunch of flowers that are um, like here. I was going to start on that, but what I decided to do was actually work my way up and bring her arm down just in case there's any miscounting. Um, so I want her arm coming off at the right spot. And if, you know, if the hand happened to be just out by a little bit, the, I could fudge it with the flowers. I think it's okay though. I haven't noticed any counting errors. Um... So yeah, the most recent part I've done is that little bit of um, stripes there. And yeah, coming up into here. So I have finished her whole um, skirt, I guess. I just need to do her jacket and sort of, um, I guess, chest area and face. Plus um, the, this arm and the flowers and then there's this kind of clock face behind her now that is the called for it's getting heavy <laughs> that's the called for color yeah um, I was thinking I might need to change it I thought I might have needed something a little bit brighter um, but it's perfect so happy with this um, I did show some friends I'm not sure how well it's showing on on the camera and they thought that I had put beads in her it's not really showing up in her skirt um, because it's it's shiny um, but there's just all the dark the dark parts are crinic um, there's still lots of beads to come so 
plan is finish all the stitching and the back stitching and then I'll put the beads in at the end. Um, but I am somewhat tempted to keep this out. Do you think I could finish it by the end of the month? I'm not sure. <laughs> um, I've definitely done more than half of it. But it, it's just a perfect example of kind of my goals for this year, having keeping certain pieces out to really get good progress on. Um, and yeah, so I'm thinking I might keep working on her till she's done, but we'll see. Okay, so they were all my existing um, rips. I've had two new starts. This is so weird. So sorry, I just have to <laughs> stop here for a second. Normally Reggie is being a big pain and walking over everything, chewing everything inside. He's asleep in the bathtub. Jemima, who never comes out while I'm filming, is asleep right next, just next to the camera there. <laughs> Not gonna argue, we'll just carry on. So, new start. Whoops, I didn't mean to show it, but anyway, <laughs> here it is. Since I last filmed, it was my birthday. And you have to have a new start on your birthday, don't you? So I love this one by Medusa Dollmaker, Gecko Rouge again. <laughs> um, it's Warrior Woman. She's a strong, fierce woman. Love her. And I think my name means Warrior, Warrior Princess, Warrior Woman, something like that. Um, so, you know, I just have it's meant to be. <laughs> um, she's large-ish. She's... Um, is it? Oh, 300 by 413 stitches with 86 colours. I'm not sure how far through I'll get this year, but you know, we'll see. I'm um, stitching on her on good old 25 count one over one full crosses and made a little bit of a start. I can't remember how many stitches I did. Um, I think, oh, I can't remember now, hang on. Yeah, I think I'll start getting into her hair once I hit down here, it's the top left corner. So, <laughs> it'll be a little while. Um, so that was my planned new start for my birthday. I guess while I'm on that, I'll quickly show you a really cute present I got for my birthday from my niece and nephew who are always asking me about the cats. They got me this. <laughs> so apparently i don't know who it was but they um there was a seller on etsy who would convert photographs into artwork and they've been <laughs> they always ask me for photos of the cats um so they used a couple that they had now there's no way they'd sit nicely like that together um so they merged them they put them together somehow uh jemima looks slightly off i can't work out what it is this one I think it's her eyes don't quite look like hers. The colouring's pretty good, um, but Reggie is absolutely spot on. Like, that is Reggie. <laughs> anyway, it's very cute. They were so proud. They were so excited to give it to me. Um, and then I had a, another new start. This was an unexpected new start. Uh, so I I had put everything away, all my cross stitching stuff away, um, just keeping out those few um, kits that I've been working on, projects that I want to work on this year. Um, and but one of them I just hadn't got around to putting away for some reason. It was still out on my desk. And then I saw on Instagram that Joe Belushi stitches. Hi Joe and Emma. And my X stitching, they were starting this one. Lakeside Needlecraft Under the Sea. 
and that was the one that just happened to be sitting out on my desk I hadn't put away yet I had I don't think I've ever mentioned this one but I kitted this up in 2018 um, yeah it was a stitch along in 2017 I missed the start and then I ended up buying it 2018 I remember distinctly remember because I just moved back home to Adelaide and I was trying to find one of the threads I think there's one metallic thread in it and I'm just trying to locate it here locally in Adelaide which wasn't so easy <laughs> um, but for whatever reason I hadn't started it yet and then I saw that they were stitching one of the large motifs a month I kind of liked the pace that they were setting very slow <laughs> just my kind of pace um, and yeah I spoke to Joe about it and couldn't help myself so the fabric that I already had earmarked for it was it's a 32 count Opal Murano Murano from Jodie Reed Designs. It was a limited edition from May 2018. It's called Caribbean Seas. That's it. I think you can see the sparkle. And so they, they're doing there's 12 sort of large motifs, I guess. Um, plus all the extra stuff. They're just focusing on getting those 12 big ones done this year, one a month. Um, because I started a bit late, I had to skedaddle a bit. And I have done the first two. It's very cute. <laughs> Super cute. I love being underwater. I love, I used to love scuba diving. I haven't done it in a long time. Um... And yeah, so unexpected new start, but fun and no regrets. Right. Okay, I think we're just about there now. Um, I have no idea how we're going for time anyway. <laughs> Uh, so I mentioned it was my birthday. I did get um, I received some stitchy kindness from a, from a very dear friend uh, and look at this um, Look at this project. I've never seen this before This is Nikki Nikki's creations. It's a bit of a Dull photo. Oh, you can see it there. It's called um, Animal Farm and so what have we got? We've got a cat, a goose, sheep, rabbit, pig, and chook. I really like it. Thank you so much. Um, what I think I'll do is finish my animal stacks, the four of them. Um, and then once I've finished that, I'll let myself start this one. Thank you very much. Also, very kindly, I was able to purchase something of my own choosing and <laughs> it was amazing timing really. Um, uh, Long Dog Samplers released their new pattern, uh, what's it called? Lo and Behold. I'll put the photo in and you can bet that's what I chose. <laughs> I don't need to start a new Long Dog anytime soon, I have plenty on the go. Um, but it's beautiful. It's got all the great animals in there. How could I not? Um, I have already found some fabric for it. It's not available for purchase yet though. Um, so anyway, I don't need to start it anytime soon. Anyway, uh, what else was I gonna say? Oh yes, so when I started the Pilgrim back in 2018, um, for some reason I'd needed to get in touch with Jules from Long Dog Samplers can't really remember why but anyway I had to email her and we just had a little bit of back and forth and I mentioned how much I love the the critters that she um that she designs um and she sent me a little sneak peek of um a pattern um a future release and it was just I could see it was two animals um distinct animals <laughs> and I tell you what, so that was would have been like mid 2018. Every single long dog release since then, I've been quickly checking. Is it this one? Is it this one? And finally, it was lo and behold, I sent, I got a little um, sneak peek of those rhinos in the middle of it. Uh, love rhinos. 
just love that whole piece so one day one day i will stitch low and behold and thank you very much to kind stitchy friends you're the best um right plans now that's everything on my list so something that's missing this month is firefly <laughs> i have not worked on firefly in february which is interesting because i don't think i did last year either um not really sure why but i'll definitely be pulling that out again this month um i want to possibly finish time traveler that's what i'm aiming for get a bit more done on my pain-free craft stitch long and we'll just see whatever whatever else comes up um yeah so i think that's everything thanks for hanging in there um from my perspective this has been a really disjointed filming session <laughs> Um, for various reasons so I hope it comes together okay <laughs> uh, yeah I think we'll leave it there and hopefully yeah we'll see you all again in another month or so all right then see ya